I would like to welcome everyone to this week's webinar on new panel and switchboard schedule implementations. I am Michael Meza and I am a electrical engineer here at Easy Power. So now back to the main focus of our webinar and that is to give you guys a heads up on the new changes that we're going to have in 9.8. These changes um, include things in equipment, or not equipment dialog, sorry, but panel and switchboard dialogs, um, some menu option changes, and inside of schedules we will have the ability to change styles and customize fonts and the size of the font. Another big change that we have uh, are in code factors and I will talk about that a little bit later but first let's get into the dialog and menu changes that we have. So let me just pop out of this PowerPoint really quick and go into 9.8. Um, so as you can see I have a small system here with panels and a switchboard. I also have a single face panel so let's first talk about that. So if we go into the single face panel and we see the service here you can see you have three face, three wire, three face, four wire, one face, two wire, one face, three wire. Um, so when you are modeling a single phase panel you want to pick one of these two so let's just pick one here press OK go into our file then properties and properties so a big thing that we've changed here is that panel schedules have their own schedule templates that you can load in um, in 9.7 we had it so it was only panels so it didn't matter if it was single phase or three phase now we've actually enabled us to have a different schedule for single phase panels so if you want to create an XML file a template that you want specifically for single phase panels you are now able to have those schedules on the one line and three phase panel schedules for your one line design. So let me just get out of here. And so now that we've seen that, another big change that we we have made is that inside of this single phase panel schedule, or not schedule, sorry, dialog, um, and also inside of three phase and also inside of switchboards, you can see that we have an accessory tab that was not available before. This accessory tab has been uh, wanted for quite some time. Um, there's some metering data in here. I'm not going to get into too much specifics, um, but these are this data sheet right here um, we have so that if you create your XML file um, in the proper way, and we'll have that a template for that in our help menu. Um, you can actually add these descriptions inside of your schedule. So I can show you here in one of the schedules that we do have. Uh, for that single phase one, we have it here. And you can see that we have accessories and numbering system and the description that we had. Um, another thing that we have added is uh, metering data. This is usually done for a switchboard. So I'm going to go back and click on the switchboard and then you see that there's also an accessory tab. Um, we have some notes here, some data that we've entered, and um, we're gonna click OK here and go into the load summary, um, which does have down here our metering data. As you can see, um, there's been alignment done to this. There's notes, um, all of the variables that we had in that dialog are in here. We also have the power factor and the safety factor here and this is just something that we've done in the XML code for this specific schedule. You guys can obviously do what you want. Um, so that pretty much sums up all of the dialog changes and uh, property tables changes that we've made. Um, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is style font and font customization so let me get into it. so uh, we've talked about the property menu accessory tab and the metering data 
So now let's move on to the style and font customization. Um, so in 9.8, we actually have a style table that you will need to go into your registry to enable. Um, I can show you that. Let me open up my registry. Uh, and if you go into your H key current user folder, then software, then easy power, and then options. The thing you would want to do is to go and create a new string value. And I've done that here. And you will need to name it style table path, um, exactly how it's written here. And then you need to add the path of your style table. So I have it um, in my folder. And I will show you that style table now. Let me zoom in a little bit. So this style table is going to enable you to pick the type of font you want, the font size, the font weight, which is going to be the boldness, and also the alignment of the font inside of a box that you have in your schedule. So if you want center, it will center that inside of the box where you have your variable. Uh, if you want it to be on the right, you just pick right and left, you pick left. Um, the font names, these are all um, all the fonts that we have in Easy Power for Notes are going to be the same thing here. Um, the big thing you do need to know is that you, when creating your schedule, you will need to use a style ID. So this table pretty much defines the style IDs so that when you go into a XML uh, file and you are trying to pick what type of font you want, the boldness and the the size of your font, you actually won't put that in there like in the past. Um, you will need to use the style ID that, so here you have TD and um, so if we look at TD we have it's an aerial font, uh, font size is 1, font weight is 400 which is just a regular font boldness um, and then we're centered and this will be this needs to be done inside of your schedule XML file so now that we've seen that um, let's take a moment here and go into easy power so I'm gonna go to a schedule here and show you what that style uh, table does and using those style IDs inside of a schedule will do. So in the past we did not have um, the ability to customize any of this. This was always just plain text. Uh, so what we've done is by using that style table as you can see here we have bolded and increased the size of the text. We've also if I go into a different schedule, because that one's kind of plain, um, created variables for notes. Obviously, I've talked about the variables for accessories already. And this is all, all of this can be done with simple XML code. We will have some guide on, in the help menu and possibly later on online on how to uh, write some of that XML code if needed. Another thing that we can look at is in this load type, you see that it's DR. This is because we've added an abbreviation to our load type down here. So DR is actually dwelling range, and I'll get into that more here in a couple seconds uh, when we talk about code factors. So let's go back into our, my PowerPoint and look at what we've added in code factors. So we've obviously added the abbreviations. Um, we've had some changes in the load descriptions, the load totals, and the demand factors. So let's hop back into Easy Power. Um, and we'll just go left to right here. So inside of this, call this a code factor table, um, we have the type, uh, we have an abbreviation that is actually called up back here, DR, 
and that's just done with um, some coding inside of the XML file that you will create. The dwelling range is um, something that we go into the file and we look at into property menus, code factors, and we used to have it so that it would only give you the load description for the f the load and not for each demand factor level. Um, what we've done now is we've added the ability to go uh, load by load in different levels. So if you see here we have dwelling range 2, 3000. So that's this first demand factor. So it's 3000 uh, and you have your demand factor of 50 over here. Let me exit out of here and you will get 50, uh, 1500. Um, if we go back into the properties table um, all of these code factors can be uh, our library default or you can actually add your own so if we go in here and add this is actually already imported and being used in these templates but I just apply that and we'll click OK OK there we go and it won't change anything but if I had the standard library to the new library that I added there would be a big difference here another thing that we've added is um, we've actually had added a couple of different load loads so connected load self fed load total load self fed load um, is something big that we've added that we've had customers ask a lot about and this panel doesn't have a sub fed panel so I will go back here and this upstream panel does have a downstream panel so we're going to go that's UPS here and aha here it is so this is that panel with the subhead panel go back down to the code table as I call it you can see that we have a subfed load here so we have dwelling range load of 3k um, and then we also have some water heater load and I think that's it oh and we have some more dwelling but it's between 3000 and 120k so all these loads are then added up or these two the connected load and the subfit load is then added up to total load um, we have that here also and then we have some demand factor loads which are just if we go back into the properties table these demand factor levels so those will correspond with each uh, percentage here and then we just simply get the total demand load and you'll see here that we match up from here to um, another variable that we have in the system so now that we've talked about the subfed, the total demand factors the only thing left is one thing let's go back to the powerpoint so I just want to go into a panel schedule template that I created here for the single phase panel um, so as you can see here I just want to go over some of the ways you will go and create your different um, abbreviations and things like that that I've mentioned today um, so it's pretty simple as in terms of we're going to use this general abbreviation um, code what you want to do is inside of your code factor you will have a name for that specific code factor um, and what you name that inside of the properties table you will also have to name that um, 
in this target name uppercase is case sensitive so you will need to know that and then the short name is actually the type of abbreviation that you would want so in this case it's general and we just want to put a G there um, goes for any other code factor that you want to put in there heating we're gonna put general heating here GH so if you see heating in the code factor is going to add a GH we can simply change that to H if we would like to so now that we've seen some of that let's go down to the way you use style IDs so before the way it was used is you would go in there and you would pick your font size and things like that the what we've done now is actually just put all that font size stuff and put it into its own table and that way uh, the easy power just looks at that table and looks at the format of your XML template and sees that you have style ID big title so then I'll see big title or go back into the style table and see what you've defined for big title so for big title we've defined Arial's font size 12 font weight is 700 that means it's bolded and we want to horizontally align it to the left and you can see that being done here so panel bold bolded size 12 to the left a couple other things I want to mention are let's go down to the code factor section or actually even the accessory table so you will need um, to make tables to have the accessory table so this is the the whole table for and code for the accessory table um, it's pretty simple it's just simple it's just normal XML code um, the name you'll need to use is accessory table um, and then you're just gonna loop through that accessory table and go um, through every accessory that you've checked inside of the accessory tab uh, so if I go in here accessories it will only show the accessories that you have uh, checked off so let's add a couple more here and you'll see that we have four accessory tables now go back in here and let's get rid of them all see what happens and there they're all gone so uh, just a couple things I wanted to show you just a little XML code um, just if you're not too familiar with it um, you can easily look it up online and there's other resources and if you really have questions on the XML code you could actually email me and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions um, so that's actually gonna wrap it up for the new additions to 9.8